Hi, welcome, this is Clemens at Elector. In a previous video I showed you how to download something from GitHub, uh, as this is what uh, most people will do with GitHub, and it turned out not to be very difficult. Uploading something to GitHub, uh, publishing something, uh, is a one step further, and in this video we will look into that. As you will see, it's not very difficult either. But first of all, why would you publish something on GitHub? Well, there are several reasons. Uh, one reason is to share your work, uh, so that other people can profit from the hard work you already did. Uh, you can back up your work to GitHub, because GitHub is a cloud-based uh, storage system, and in, once in the cloud it's uh, more difficult to lose your work. And the third reason, which is the main reason of existence of GitHub, is uh, to work together with other people on the same project. Before we continue, a word about licenses. When you make something public, you must also specify how your work may be used you must choose a license for your work. Uh, there are many licenses and it is up to you to choose the one that is best for you. Uh, common examples are MIT or LGPL or Creative Commons. Licensing is a complicated matter, so you may want to study it a bit deeper before proceeding. Simply saying you can do whatever you want with this uh, is not good enough. You can choose a license at the time of creating the repository, but you can also add license statements to your files now. Before you publish anything on GitHub, you must first organize your material. Someone who will clone your stuff uh, will expect that all the files are in the right places, that it's complete and that it will st uh, work straight out of the box. Once your project is on GitHub, you want to avoid making big uh, changes to the project structure as it uh, confuses your users. This means that you will have to think carefully about how you organize your project. Of course, you can't put everything in the same folder, uh, which is fine for simple projects, but when a project gets bigger, it quickly becomes a mess. So if needed, reorganize your project so that files that belong together are together in the same folder. There are no rules uh, to do this, only common practice, and I suggest you look around a bit on GitHub to see uh, how other people have uh, done this. Once your project is properly organized, you must make sure that it still works. The idea of a versioning system like GitHub is that only working and preferably thoroughly tested projects are published. Work in progress therefore remains on your computer until it is ready for publishing. Then you must create a readme.md document. This is a simple plain text file that lives in the root of your repository and uh, that functions as a sort of a homepage for it. It must be named readme.md, where md stands for markdown language. In this document you write clear instructions for building your project and how to use it. Also explain the purpose of your project. Surprisingly, people often forget to do this, uh, making it hard for visitors to find out what the project is all about. Put yourself in the position of a potential user of your project. Note that you can skip this step as uh, GitHub lets you create the readme file uh, when you create the repository, but it's good practice to prepare it before. So, once the project is organized on your computer, and you tested it, and you created a readme file for it, and you chose a license for it, uh, then we can proceed to the publishing stage. Of course, in order to publish on GitHub you will need an account, but I am sure that you are capable of figuring out uh, how to get one. Creating a new repository is very easy. It starts by clicking the plus icon next to your profile's avatar, and then you choose a new repository. Enter a name for your repository. Enter a short but clear description. Choose public if you want your project to be visible to the whole world. If you don't want this, uh, choose private. But note that there are some restrictions uh, for private repositories. Uncheck initialize this repository with a readme, because you already have one. You can now choose a license. Scroll down to see a list of popular licenses. If you are lost, uh, which is very understandable, uh, click the little i to open the page with more information about licenses. Finally, click Create Repository. You will now see an empty repository. If you chose a license, there will be a license file in it. The last step is to add your files to the repository, or repo. This is surprisingly easy, as you can just drag and drop your files in the repository without having to type hard to remember commands in the terminal window. So open the repository on your computer in a file explorer, select everything and then drag and drop it all on the GitHub page. Wait for GitHub to transfer the files and then enter a commit comment. Usually this comment explains the reason for this commit. It is applied to all the files that are part of the commit or update. In the large box you can enter more detailed information about the reasons for this update. Click commit changes to finalize the commit. Ok, so now you have two options for managing your repository. 
One, you continue with drag and drop to add files uh, and to update them. Uh, you can even edit files on GitHub and you can uh, delete them. The local and the remote repositories will not be synchronized and uh, git commands entered in a terminal will not work. The second option is to clone the GitHub repository to a new location on your local drive. You can do this with the git clone command as shown in the video about how to download something from GitHub. Now a hidden folder with the name .git will be created and this folder provides the synchronization between the local repository and the master on GitHub. And it also allows you to use git commands to interact with your repository. This is the preferred way of doing things but it requires of course knowledge of git. Good guides for git commands can be found online. You can always use drag and drop but doing so will break the synchronization between the two repositories and you will have to reclone your repository to restore it. So now you know how to create a repository on GitHub and how to work with it, either by dragging and dropping files or by using git commands. Uh, whichever method you use, uh, please always keep in mind that what is on GitHub is supposed to be complete and working. So whenever you uh, update a file and you want to update your repository, please make sure that it works. If your commit breaks the repository, then uh, to cite a famous American president, you're fired. After your first experiments on GitHub, uh, you uh, may want to delete your repository. This is possible, of course, but it requires some clicks and uh, scrolling, and there are some security hurdles to take. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it interesting and useful. Uh, thank you for watching.